as amazing as it seems, even after all the methods that we have learned for finding integrals by hand, there are still infinitely many integrals that cannot be solved using the analytical methods we've learned so far. As a matter of fact, there are infinitely many integrals that cannot be solved analytically, period. Not just with the techni techniques we've learned. So, for example, e to the x squared, or sine of x squared, sine of x over x. They seem relatively simple integrals. Uh, but none of them are able to be solved with the methods that we've learned so far. Amazing, isn't it? So that means that we're going to need a few other alternative methods to get us by. So the first thing we need to talk about is the full integral table. I also call it the big integral table. So on homework and exams, it'll be noted when you're allowed to use this one. So um, they will state Uh, use big integral table. I'll sometimes call it the big integral table or I'll sometimes call it the full integral table. Those two words. Now what am I talking about? Well remember that we've had this quick integral table which was the second page of the exam note sheets as it currently is. I might switch it and make it the first page because it's the one we use the most often. But these 20 integrals that we know and learned in Calc 1 but then later on in the course pack, there should be another integral table set. There it is. And it says Math 154 Integral Tables. And the current semester that I'm making this video, there are 121 of them. <laughs> there could be more. Um, I could make more. But that's where we're currently at with 121 different intervals. This integral table is built from some of the techniques that we've learned, but also some others. And so these are um, standard forms that you can use to find integrals. And we're going to practice that in this section. So when it says to use the big integral table, you're allowed to. If it doesn't say that, then you'll have to use all the other techniques that we've used for the, through the chapter. Now, there are lots of integrals that cannot be solved even with that. And so we use different symbolic methods, such as um, computer algebra systems. So computer algebra systems are programs such as uh, Maple. That's the one we use at Jackson College. Um, so if you continued on, say, at Jackson College for Calculus 3 or um, differential equations, you would use Maple. Uh, me personally, I went to Michigan State and we use Mathematica there. Um, MATLAB is another big one, uh, SymboLab, those kinds of things, right? So those three, and there's, there's several others, that's what the dot 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 means. Those are called computer algebra systems. They're sophisticated programs that will actually find definite and indefinite integrals for you. So for example, let me just show you this real quick. So I have here, um, this is Maple, and so I can tell it, uh, find me the integral of sine of x with respect to x. And it tells me, whoop, if you can see that, it's pretty small, I'll, I'll increase the font size, that it's negative cosine of x. Right, so, and then I could use that one that we just saw, so let me copy and paste here. I could go back to the palette and get this, but I'm just gonna grab it here. So let's do the sine of x squared dx. I'm gonna pause it, because it's actually a pretty um, involved calculation, so give me one second. And there we can see that's the actual answer, believe it or not. And I'll talk about that in another couple pages. It's called a Fresnel function. So we'll talk about that in a bit. So but it's, it is finding the answers. And so that's the, those computer programs. So that's what a computer algebra system looks like. Then there are numerical methods, so such as using um, calculators technically. Technically, you can use computer algebra systems to find numerical answers as well. And you can also use Desmos. <laughs> I don't even know why I said calculators. Desmos is better, right? Why not use it? Technically, a lot of the times they're using numerical techniques such as um, Riemann sums, for example. There are other numerical techniques. Um, some of them are in section 8.8, .8, but that section's been cut. So, but you're welcome to, of course, read it over or watch the um, books lecture video up on Math Lab or something like that to watch it. All right, so that leads us to integration, since that's what this chapter eight exam is going to be on. So there are analytical methods. So 
all the standard methods, substitution, integration by parts, partial fractions, trig substitution, powers of trig, etc., etc., etc. There's a big list in section 8.6 of all the by hand in a, um, standard methods that we can use. So these ones are by hand. So when it says to do it by hand, that's what it's talking about. <laughs> um, so these would be do not use the big table because the big table basically cuts out the middleman and gets you to the answer. So a lot of the ones that are in that big table are built using partial fractions or integration by parts, etc. So in the instructions, it'll say, do not use big table. So then you don't and you do that big list in section 8.6. This one um, will allow you, so it'll say use big table. So those will be in the instructions for um, an exam, for example. So use the big table or the full table. I don't remember which way I say it. But if you do, be sure to note which or which number, what number, which problem. <laughs> that was um, two words sent together. Be sure to note the number of the formula used. That's your work, right? to explain which formula you used from the big table. This, um, if you want computer methods, symbolic methods will come out of things like Maple or Wolfram Alpha, Mathematica, those ones, etc. <laughs> I'm just gonna say etc. And then this one, technically all the computer algebra systems can also do this. There are other numeric methods to approximate definite integrals. So there's Riemann sums and things like that. Etc. So there's there's numerical methods that you can do, and there's also um, the Riemann sums and so on can be computed with computers, but you can also use um, Desmos, use a calculator. Although again, why would you use a calculator? Nobody knows. Or Maple, etc. All of those same programs will be able to find these. Sometimes Mathematica. There we go. <laughs> Da, 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 et cetera. All right, so all of this is leading to one of my favorite cartoons, and it's in the notes, but I also have access to it on the internet. Um, the lovely author of XKCD has been emailed, and he did not mind me putting it in the course pack, but I'll, I'll give him credit where credit is due, um, because I have a lot of students at this point getting frustrated with, with integration. <laughs> so um, differentiation is simple. It's straightforward. It's very scientific, right? So differentiation is a science. So you chain rule, power rule, product rule, quotient rule, you know, does it have a quotient? Use a quotient rule. Does it have a product? Use the product rule with the chain rule, da, da, da. And you just keep going and going and going until you're done, right? And then integration is more of an art. <laughs> so you try integration by parts and substitution, like those are your big ones. And then, well, you can see, you know, partial fractions, Riemann integration, that's numerical that they're talking about, um, et cetera. Phone calls to mathematicians, burn the evidence, <laughs> install Mathematica, right? Because that's, um, those computer programs will do things for you, et cetera. Um, Stokes theorem is actually a calculus three theorem that you'll learn eventually, right? So it's much more of an art form, which is what I wrote up here. So derivatives are, are actually really easy <laughs> because they're very straightforward. They're a science. Integrals, are an art. <laughs> you try and try and try and try some more until you find the right thing that's going to work. Um, they are actually much more difficult. Um, so you have to have to persevere and keep trying no matter what. As the graph below shows, <laughs> different things, right? Um, very few people know the right integral just by looking at a problem. I mean, unless it's a really easy integral. But sometimes, I mean, even something as simple, and we saw it, as sine of x squared just gave us this crazy town answer. Like, what the heck is that? What's going on there, right? And the answer is, well, so there's something else going on. There's something more complicated going on, right? And um, which leads to my other joy in this, which is what the heck is a Bessel function, right? So a Bessel function is something that can pop up inside those um, 
weird integrals from computer program systems, right? So, or you could easily say, what the heck is a Fresnel function? <laughs> exactly. So it can, they can work out weird. Now, computer algebra systems will be something you'll work with in Calc 3. They're not something we really work with um, too much in our course. If we are going to work with them, what we will use, and I should have mentioned this back before, because Mathematica and Maple and all of those cost money, um, we can use Wolfram Alpha or uh, I think Symbo Lab might be free. And there are others, so I'll just say etc. So those ones are free for us. And so we'll just use those for the couple problems that it says to use a computer algebra system because we're not going to pay the money for these yet. Um, you'll buy access to Maple, for example, at our school in Calc 3. So um, it doesn't cost that much because you're only buying um, short-term access. So I can put down here Wolfram Alpha. Uh, Wolfram is the name of the company that actually makes Mathematica. So Wolfram Alpha is like a, a web version of that, but it's, it's lighter. It doesn't have as much, you know, oomph to it as Mathematica does. Um, so, but that's another program we can use. That, that one I use a lot. I actually have it as an app on my phone because I'm a real nerd. <laughs> so, all right. So um, that's what all of this is saying. So these are some examples of computer algebra systems. Apparently, so Wolfram Alpha is one we will use. Again, these three cost money, um, so we won't really use those in this class. We will use this one in Calc 3 for sure. I personally used that one in, in my graduate school work, again, because I went to Michigan State, and that was kind of the one we used most at Michigan State. So different software packages may produce different results for the same indefinite integral um, because of how they were programmed. And they do ultimately agree, but they will show you different things. I've run into that with Wolfram um, and Mathematica are made by people in Britain originally, and they work differently, say, than Maple, which is actually from Canada no irony there maple leaves get it so um so they sometimes program things differently than each other so i've noticed that myself desmos uses numerical methods but is not a cas it's not a computer algebra system it cannot find in um cannot find indefinite integrals which we already knew right it doesn't work like that it'll find numerical things but that's about it and there are integrals that cannot be done in terms of functions we know, as we just saw with the Fresnel function. Fresnel also happens with cosine of x squared. As you can see, the sine function, um, sine integral function, which is actually a whole other thing, it looks like SI, um, the cosine integral function, the error function, the Bessel function, the, the, there's, there's other functions out there. All right, with that, let's wait on going any further till next video when I'm gonna show some examples using the big integral table.